don't know if it's crowd trap. Doing the type of work that I do, I've got a lot of dream fishing locations. Uh, it really depends on the particular species that I'm fishing for. If it's catfish, it would be the Mississippi River. If it's smallmouth bass, it would probably be uh, one of your favorite lakes. Uh, it would be the St. Lawrence River mm -hmm. in upper state New York. It's a fantastic fishery. To pick one particular body of water, I would probably go back to where I learned to bass fish uh, for largemouth. Summer, fall, winter, spring, cold water, hot water, muddy water, clear water, and it would probably be Pickwick Lake uh, an hour and 30 minutes from right here. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how about you? And to answer the question of what, what's my dream fishing location, uh, that's hard, just like Bill said. But you know, when it comes to targeting largemouth or smallmouth, it's hard to get the best of both worlds. When it comes to smallmouth, I'd either pick Lake Champlain or the Thousand Islands area on the St. Lawrence River. Good one. Um, it's just got giant smallmouth. It's it's pretty land up there. And you know, when you're going up there in the summertime, you're kind of escaping that, that south heat that we have in Texas and also y'all have here in Tennessee. Oh, we have it too. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to targeting largemouth bass, um, I'm going to go to the as far away from the St. Lawrence as you can go and go to Lake Falcon down on the Rio Grande down in South Texas and it borders Mexico there um, and it's just chock full of giant largemouth bass and I, I've spent a lot of time there and it's just you know some of the fondest memories I have fishing with my dad you know growing up and right. and catching personal best bass uh, you know it, it'd have to be one of those two lakes depending on which species I'm targeting. You've got a long growing season there and that that, yeah. that area does produce gigantic size fish. Huge fish, huge fish it does. and lots of them. Right. You know, that, that started as, as a young age for me. Um, growing up, seeing um, my dad be a professional bass fisherman. Yeah, good um, I traveled all across the country. Uh, got to see him um, win the Bassmaster Classic at a young age and, and just really experience what that was like. Um, and growing up around the sport, I was taught at a young age, you know, what could be. Um, and you know, guys like you, um, Bobby Murray, Roland Martin, you know, really, really set the stage of uh, you guys created this sport in a way with with Ray Scott. And so, um, you know, just just watching the history and growing up around the sport, watching your TV show and, and everything that goes along with it, um, taught me that um, you know you can take this hobby, passion, and and make a living at it. And and I'm very very blessed to be able to do that. And I'm, you know, thankful for, for guys like this that, well, that set us up and, you know, gave us an opportunity at this dream. I was blessed as a youngster that I had a daddy and a granddaddy that gave me the greatest gift of all, and that was introducing me to the sport. And as I grew up, I realized there was a competitiveness here. And I got a call uh, from, at that time, the world's largest Ford dealer. And he said, we want to sponsor you in a tournament. And I said, what's, what's that mean? And he said, we want to sponsor you in this event. And then I could see the competitiveness mm -hmm. starting to grow yep. and to compete in that event. And I competed in that event against 125 fishermen from all around the country. And it opened up a, a big door for me. Yep. And then I landed great sponsors mm -hmm. like, like Mystic. Mm -hmm. And uh, that helped me along tremendously. So. Operating fishing poles in my boat about 30 at a time, but I have a warehouse full of them um, basically at my house, just old ones, new ones that I haven't used yet, probably probably 150 poles. In my boat, I probably carry, when, we do, when we're doing a program, uh, a build-in shoot, I usually carry about six, and but I can't fish but with one at a time, so. Uh, I probably carry about six. If we're doing salt water, I usually carry about four. The number one fish for fish species for Bill Dance, without question, would be the smallmouth bass. I still put largemouth uh, right up there on the pedestal, but it would have to be the smallmouth. Why do I say the smallmouth? Uh, it's their fighting ability, their willingness uh, to live, 
They never give up their acrobatic ability. Uh, and I know in talking with Alton, I think he's going to echo a lot of the same things I just said. So how about it? You know, when it comes to my favorite species to target, uh, just like Bill, it's going to be the smallmouth bass. Um, and number one is just they fight so hard. A lot of times you're using light tackle, light line because you're in clear water and uh, they're extremely acrobatic. They'll jump three, four feet out of the water. It's just, it's a lot of fun. It's ex an exciting, intense way to fish. Oh, absolutely. And um, they pull hard, so it's going to be the smallmouth bass. Tarpon, about a 45 pound tarpon, but it was on light tackle light spinning tackle on a, a medium, a medium action, seven foot um, spinning rod. It was absolutely the, the ultimate in, uh, in fishing. If I'm fishing moving water, uh, like the Mississippi River, I use cut bait. We use freshwater herring. If I'm fishing a pond, uh, stink bait works exceptionally well. Uh, for channel cat. I guess that was directed at Bill because I don't fish for catfish. If I catch a catfish, it's on accident. 